Diaries of a Madman Chapter 188 Part 4 of 5 What will Luna be doing? Watcher ask. If she survives, she'll be returning to the bunker to help there. If she survives what? Watcher ask. What did she do this time? She jumped into Athena's book without asking. It should be a breeze for her, Taya said. Caught and I barely broke a sweat. You were also both prepared for a fight. I don't know if we ever told Luna what happens when you just jump in. I mean, I'm sure she'll probably be fine, but she's still taking a hell of a risk. Before Watcher could continue pestering me about inane bullshit, Sunny trotted up and placed a huge plate of muffins before me and my daughter. Fresh from the oven, she sweetly said. Taya immediately floated one over and bit into it, then gagged and spit it out. I just said they're fresh from the oven. That means they're hot. Ugh, I'll go get some milk, just like that, she trotted right off, muttering. Watcher grabbed a muffin of his own. I'll let you enjoy breakfast with your filly, my lady, he said. If you don't get one for Sentinel, she might slap you. Wise. He grabbed another and walked back over to his table. So what have we learned? I ask, looking at my filly. Muffins are bad for you. Durmer, wait a minute or two before munching on something that's literally steaming. Unless it's Phoenix, because that never stops steaming. You can eat Phoenix, she asked. Apparently. It tasted really good, too. I'm sure these muffins will also taste really good if you're patient enough. I dunno. I think they might be evil. Sunny wouldn't make anything evil. She's my favorite for a reason. I immediately felt a very large and slightly sharp paw on each shoulder. Your favorite, my lady. Caught purred. My favorite cook, yes. Her claws retracted. Are you sure that's good for your gloves? I had them custom made, she said, sitting next to me. For occasions when I guard you. And what are you guarding me from now? I ask. These evil muffins. Taya said, glaring at them. I will be guarding you in Ponyville, of course, she said. First I'm hearing of it, I said. Where did you get those orders from? Princess Celestia, when I allowed her to turn me into your vassal. One of the standing orders all vassals have is to keep their nobles protected at all times. You're doing your absolute best to make obeying difficult for some reason. Well, I don't tend to need protection, I replied with a shrug. Tell me again about the assassins you ran into in Griffiths, she said with a grin. Taya finally grabbed one of the muffins and nommed into it. They're not evil anymore, she said. Do you mean the assassins that I dealt with? I ask. The ones I didn't need protection from. I grabbed a muffin and bit right into it. The blueberry flavor reminded me of a time long ago. I just about lost myself in memories, but was brought back by a pitcher of milk and two full glasses settling on the table. There you are, my ladies, Sunny said. Thank you, I said, bopping her on the nose. She accepted it with grace and dignity. The muffins are wonderfully nostalgic. Good. Let me know if you need anything else. If she does, she can ask her favorite, Cot said, putting a paw on one of my thighs. Okay, crazy lady, Sunny said. She walked back off to the kitchen, no longer muttering. I'm not crazy, Cot said, pulling her paw back. I'm one of the only sane ones left. No. You're pretty fucking crazy, I said. Want a muffin? How am I crazy? Cot demanded. Are you kidding me? Holy shit, where do I start? I guess from the beginning. You were kidnapped and enslaved at a young age and had horrible things done to you, starting your downward spiral into PTSD. Then you were kidnapped and enslaved by ritualistic murderers and made to do even more horrifying things fucking you up even more. It built and built in you until you snapped, starting the revolution. And you can't look at what happened during that and tell me you're any kind of sane. After that, 
you joined the government and started doing what you do best again until you finally turned against them and told Bloodbeak what was up. Half the shit you've done since you joined the crew has pretty much terrified everybody, including me. I've heard some people pondering whether you might kill them in their sleep if they say the wrong thing. Then you go and tell me you want to be my slave, because at this point, that's the only way you know how to live your life. You've never been free and you're afraid of what will happen if you are. So you shackled yourself to someone who knows how dangerous you are in the hopes that she'll keep you from doing anything wrong. I wanted to try to help you get better, but you seem content to wallow in the crazy. Are you sure you don't want a muffin? They're fucking amazing. I started working on another one. A muffin would be nice, Cot whispered. She reached over, grabbed one, and started nibbling on it. Her eyes were just staring into space. The milk just made them taste all the better. This was a good choice of breakfast, I said. That's because I'm the best daughter ever, Taya sweetly replied. I'm sorry I'm so broken, Kot said. It's not your fault you're crazy as shit, I said with a shrug. You're still super cute when you aren't being horrifying. Sometimes you're cute even when you are being horrifying. It's okay, Taya said. We're all mommy's rejects. Being crazy just makes you one of us. These muffins are pretty good. Told you, I said, bopping my cat girl on the nose. Do you have everything you need? I plan to leave as soon as we're done. Of course, my lady. Good. Go get my daggers. They were on the changeling ship. They are now in your room, Cot said. Doppel had all of your belongings moved back down. I'll go get them. She almost ran away, eager to attend to her lady. That wasn't very nice, Mommy, Taya said. I would have offered her milk, but Sunny didn't bring enough glasses. It's not my fault. I meant the part where you called her crazy. It wasn't very nice at all, Watcher said from across the room. She asked a question. I answered it. As rudely as possible. Sentinel said. Yeah, well, I gave you both muffins. That put them in their place and shut them up right proper. When Taya finished off the last one, Kot still hadn't returned. So, you ready? I asked my filly. Yep. We can go as soon as Kot gets back. Or we could go now. Why do we need her to keep us safe? Mommy, after what you just said to her, she's going with us. And you're gonna let her cuddle up against you the whole time. Why not let her cuddle against you? What, are you kidding? She's crazy. Have fun with that, mommy. I decided to refill my glass since Cot was taking so long. It had been a while since I had just plain milk. It was pretty good. When Cot stopped being lazy and got her shit together, I took the knives and tucked them away, then stood up. So, we all ready? I ask. Where exactly are we going? Taya asked. Take us just inside the gate of our house near the Everfree, I said. Before she could, Cot latched onto my arm. Taya giggled and finally teleported us out. It happened to be directly in front of Bon Bon and Lyra, who were walking toward the gate. They both froze. Sub. Lyra smiled and darted forward to hug me. Hey, Navi. She was all kinds of squishy, so I made sure to hug her back. Did you just teleport in? Bon Bon asked. Sure did, Taya replied. What brings you all the way out here? Lyra asked. I came to tell you that I had plans for the house. It'll probably be at least a month and you're welcome to stay throughout the process, but it might get loud. What kind of plans? Bon Bon asked. I'm going to turn it into a university, I said. Build it out, add several more buildings, and increase the defenses. I'll also put in a gate in the back. What kind of university? Lyra asked, finally pulling away from my grasping arms. The kind that will reinvent several lost human technologies, I said. I've been hoarding my knowledge for too long. 
it's time to put it to use for everyone's benefit. That sounds, dangerous, Bonbon bon slowly said. Maybe. If you need help affording a new place, I'd be happy to donate some cash. We knew this day was coming, Bonbon bon said. We've done plenty of saving. A month should be long enough for us to find a new home. You own the Ever Free now, right? Lyra asked. I do. This university will be my first step toward turning it into something worth owning. Could we build a house next to it, she asked. If you want, I said with a shrug. We don't, Bon Bon immediately said. Living here has been an experience. I might be interested in moving out here when you get the forest cleaned up, but I don't really want to deal with all the monsters without thick walls. We can afford a nice place anywhere we want, honey. Let's not make this complicated. Staying nearby would literally be the least complicated thing ever, Lyra said. We wouldn't have to change anything. We can talk about it later, Bonnie finally said. We don't need to trouble Nav with it. I'm sure Doppel would love another changeling face in Canterlot, I said. Canterlot is nice, but I would never want to live there, Bon Bon said. But what about all the parties? Lyra asked. You can have all kinds of fun. To be fair, I don't want to live there either, I said. But someone has to keep an eye on Celestia and I drew the short straw, so here we are. Is there anything else we can help you with? Nav. Bonnie asked. We were actually both on our way to work. That's all, I said. We'll be back later to talk more exact times, but it'll definitely be a bit. We'll let you know before we move, Bon Bon said. That way you can get a few guards here. Cool beans. Then we'll get I suddenly heard something that made me look up, toward the forest. It sounded like, singing but so beautiful that it was drawing me in. Do you, do you hear that? I ask, taking a step toward the tree line. Hear what? Cod asked. I hear it too. Taya said, her ears twitching. It's so pretty. Are you all right? Lyra asked. I blinked myself free and looked down to Taya. You read the book about tree sisters. Didn't you say something about hearing trees singing? Yeah, but, listen. To what? Cod asked. It's a tree sister thing, I said. Now let me listen. After about thirty seconds, I nodded. Taya, give yourself wings. We're flying in. What is it saying? Cod asked. A tree sister is calling to the two of us, I said. Apparently there's one in the forest. I have no idea what's going on right now, Bon Bon said. Taya and I are tree sisters, I said. That means our biology is combined with that of a tree. It gives us several abilities. One of them allows us to hear trees in large enough combinations singing. These trees in particular are inviting us to speak to their owner. Are you sure it's not a trap? Bon Bon asked. That forest is kinda evil. It's not evil, it's just defensive, I said. A tree sister controlling it might explain why it's defensive. Taya's horn lit up and two butterfly wings appeared on her back. Besides, my lady need not fear a trap while I am with her, Cot said, rubbing her head against my neck. But you don't have wings, Lyra said. It was good to see you two again, I said. We'll need to make time to catch up properly later. You lived here for almost a year, Bonnie said. Why are they just now calling you? This probably isn't the first time. This is just the first time I've heard it. Something about the bunker triggered another stage in our evolution that allowed us to hear them, apparently. What bunker? Bonnie asked. You know, I don't want to keep you from work, I said. Taya, grab Cot and toss me. I suddenly catapulted up into the air. When I managed to catch the air under my wings, Taya joined me with Cot held up in a bubble of magic. So where are we going? Taya asked. I only know of one big ass tree in the Everfree. 
I can't imagine the tree sister living anywhere else. Or tree brother, Tyus said. I can't believe we couldn't hear this before. It's so beautiful. What does it sound like? Cod asked. A perfect harmony, I said. An entire symphony. I've never heard anything like it, yet it sounds like something that's been with me for all of time. So why aren't you carrying me? Cod asked. Because my wings are utter garbage now. With luck, they'll be less shitty after they grow back. If they grow back, Cot said. Well, them not growing back would certainly be a bonus, but I have a feeling I won't get that lucky. Most of us dream of having the ability to fly, she said. And yet you'd throw it away. Yeah, well, when you get gifted wings by the fiancé from hell that you never wanted, you're welcome to keep your set. Oh wait, he already gave you something, didn't he? How's that working out for you? I never realized how much I took for granted until I couldn't touch anyone anymore, she said. I'm sorry I'm creepy, my lady. I'm sorry I scare you. I'm so. It's not your fault, Cot, I said. And I'm sorry about what I said. I shouldn't have done that to you. No, you should have. And you can stop pretending. I am sorry for what I said. You can stop now, Taya, she said. My filly ground to a stop, which kinda also made me stop. You can both quit pretending now. I know what this is. And what is this? I ask. An execution, caught side, slumping down in her little magic bubble. I tried to serve you well, my lady. I'm so sorry for failing you. Wow. Would you seriously just let me kill you like this? That made her blink. W what? Wow. Do you seriously think I would just kill you like this? I. I don't. Jesus Christ, caught. Why the fuck would I execute you after we just spoke to two witnesses? What, do you think I'm an idiot? If I was going to kill you, I would never give you a chance to even possibly fight back. I would just have Taya pinch a few neurons in your brain, which would instantly kill you. And I certainly wouldn't do it right after speaking to two fucking witnesses. And what, you thought we'd just do it over the forest and leave your body to rot? More like leave your bones behind for the lawman to pick over, more possible evidence. No, I'd have your entire corpse utterly evaporated leaving not even a single hair. I thought you were going to tell them that it was a trap, she slowly said. You're so adorable, I said, reaching in to bop her on the nose. Let's keep going. So is this, actually a tree sister? Or brother, I said with a shrug. I started moving again, so they followed. I don't know how I ever thought you could do that, she said. The only thing that's sloppy about me is my vagina, caught, I said. If I kill you, it'll be professionally done, not a last minute hit. That isn't what I meant and you know it, she shouted. The reason we're all following you is because we know you would never do us like that. And until 30 seconds ago, you knew you were on your way to die. I guess it's easy for your opinion of me to change that quickly. Because I'm crazy. She slowly asked. Complete nutbag. A complete nutbag who has been nothing but loyal and dependable, she said. And you already know I always will be. If you're loyal and dependable enough to let me just fly you out to the woods and murder you, I'll take it, I said. I'm loyal and dependable enough to let you do anything, she said. You own me, wholly and completely, my lady. Yes, I know. You're my slave for life, remember. Always and forever. Good. So when we get where we're going, let me do the talking. I'm just your pretty arm candy, she said. God, what a fucking psycho. I can fix that, Aqua said. I can wrap up all that crazy in a neat little bag and leave you something useful in its place. We're not doing that. What? You'll wipe your daughter's mind on a whim but you won't deal with the mass murderer who raped you. I didn't do anything to Taya's mind. 
and you are going to stay away from Kot's mind. You watery freaks have done enough damage to her. Yes, Flo did quite a number on her. Your purest little elemental was making new friends before it was popular, yet I don't recall you ever enslaving her because of it. I wasn't one of the new friends she happened to make. You know, probably. Well, I guess you'll have to find out for sure in your coma, won't you? The coma that you'll be keeping your fucked up tendrils away from. Apparently that wasn't worthy of a reply. There's the tree, Tyus said. End of part 4